Anthony Lakes, a simulation of tranquility. The quiescence was meaningful, a temporal escape from the exigency of the work environment. Gary desiring to escape the inveterate monotony of accepted activities, not an aversion, but a diversion. The sun beginning its departure in the west, the introduction of shadows silhouetting the embodiment of the tree-line horizon, the compass of the surroundings void of populace to ail nature's ambience. The silence and aura of the nocturnal presentation, a reprieve from the circadian family and work-related responsibilities, to utter reflection of brevet, but rather to assimilate the tranquility of the moment. Gary perceived the lack of concurrence and interest the residences of Anthony found in the city-owned 153-acre lake. Ascertaining in the late evening hours through the week, its rural setting, a scant one and one half miles north of the city limits. For some reason its providence normally abandoned except for an occasional solitary figure and in all probability exhibiting the same reputable proclivity as Gary. Much of the lake's activity was in the summertime. Weekend visitors from Wichita and outlying communities participating in boating, skiing, and a utilization of the recreational hookups. The fishing benefaction, disconcerting, the stocking of species very minimal, but adjoining the lake the added convenience of a nine-hole municipal golf course and gun club, giving credence for additional activity and a provisional catalyst for out-of-town visitors. The scent of paint thinner in the southwest corner of Gary's North Springfield residence's basement. Its source, the three-gallon brush cleaning container made from a holiday popcorn can with a screen implant, a la Bob Ross, the renowned PBS Happy Painter. Gary finding Bob Ross's wet tarpaulin technique, the guest so covered canvas providing a foundation for painting landscapes, conveying an immediate depiction of the intended likeness. The canvas, like the piano keyboard, an expression of conveyance, giving external interface to the inner person. The novice artist finding the greatest difficulty, the arresting of creativity, when to conclude and pin a work is finished. Besides his accumulation of visionary oil paints and easel residing in the corner was his ergometer exercise bike, weight lifting bench, and dormant band equipment able to boost the sound from a cassette player and reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder to a concert sound. The opposite side, the southeast corner of the expansive 1500 square foot basement was lent to labor. A workbench constructed with 2 by 10s addressed with a mammoth vise and grinder, a station for various electrical and manual carpentry appliances, with a host of mechanical wrenches and drivers. Gary preparing for the future task of commuting the long neglected home to a more suitable countenance, plus a future mammoth undertaking, a painting of the three-storied Goliath, 